Good afternoon, TPC family. It's Brother Craig here. For those of you who haven't heard yet, yesterday the county judge issued an order that as of 12.01 on Wednesday, the entire county will be under a shelter-in-place order. That means you have to stay in your homes unless you are going out for specific reasons, such as you're in a job where you're required to still come to work because you're your business is essential for the working of the county or you're going to the pharmacy you're going to the hospital you're going out to buy food from the grocery store but unless you're doing one of those things you're ordered to stay in your home this is tough for a lot of us and sometimes it feels like if you have to stay home in a situation like this that that means you lack faith you believe God is your healer you believe God is your provider and that he is your protector and that if he's all of those things to you, you should be able to come and go as you please because you will be protected from the coronavirus. And I'm here to go with you today. So let's take a look at what the Bible says about that. One of the verses, one of the scriptures we've often heard quoted right now during this time comes from Matthew chapter four, and it's the second temptation of Jesus. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 5, I'm reading here from the NIV, says, Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. Verse 6, If you are the Son of God, Satan said, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Satan here is quoting from Psalm 91, which is reported to have been written by Moses. Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. So Satan quoted scripture, so Jesus came back and quoted scripture. Let's look at that scripture Jesus quoted. It's Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 16, part of Moses' first address to the Israelites in Deuteronomy. It says, do not put the Lord your God to the test as you did at Massa. Now we need to look at what happened at Massa. What happened at Massa comes at the beginning of Exodus chapter 17. We'll start here at verse 1. The whole Israelite community set out from the desert of sin, traveling from place to place as the Lord commanded. So if you remember back in, Deut back in Exodus, there was the pillar of cloud that would be there with them by day and night. And they would only travel when the pillar of cloud moved. So when the pillar stayed in one place, they stayed in that place. When the pillar moved, they moved. So they only moved as the Lord commanded. They were acting in the perfect will of God. They were doing just as the Lord was telling them to do. They weren't moving when the Lord told them to stay still. And they weren't staying still when the Lord told them to move. And they camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. So even though they were in the perfect will of God and they were in the exact place the Lord wanted them to be, they still had a major life-threatening problem. There was no water there. And that was a problem for their children. That was a problem for their livestock. That was a problem for their plants and their crops. It threatened every aspect of their society, this lack of water. Doesn't that sound a little bit familiar in this day and age that we have a problem that threatens the very fabric and every essence of our society? That we have a life-threatening problem? And so faced with this life-threatening problem, verse 2 tells us, They quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses replied, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord your God to the test? In other words, why are you angry at me? Why are you demanding that the Lord meet and demand to know where the Lord is in this situation? But the people were thirsty for water there, so they grumbled against Moses. And they said, why did you bring us out of Egypt to make us and our children and our livestock die of thirst? In other words, why did you put us in this life-threatening situation? You need to take care of it immediately. See, they lacked the faith to realize that if God put them in that situation and he still had the promise on their life, in other words, they still had the promised land ahead of them, one of two things was going to happen. Either God was going to miraculously provide water for them, or he was going to put them in a situation where they didn't need water. But either way, the Lord was with them and the Lord was going to protect them. 
And Moses cried out to the Lord, saying, What am I to do with these people? This is in verse 4. They are almost ready to stone me. In verses 5 and 6, the Lord told Moses to take out his staff that he had used at the Red Sea to make the Red Sea part, and that he would strike a stone and water would come out of it. And that's exactly what happened. And in verse 7, Moses called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and they tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? So they asked that question, Is the Lord among us or not? And Moses then in Deuteronomy told them, you're not to ask that question like you did at Massa. And Jesus, faced with the temptation of the devil, went back and said, you're not to ask, is the Lord among us or not? You are So when the second temptation happened and Satan was saying, throw yourself off the temple and you will be protected. Jesus is saying, I'm not going to go into a situation and create a danger and then ask, is the Lord with me or not? In other words, will the Lord prove himself that he is protecting me or not? And that same principle is applicable directly in this situation today. We're not to go out and shake hands with everyone and then ask, is the Lord with me or not? We're not out there to, to be around everyone and ignore social distancing to ask, is the Lord with us or not? The Lord's hand of protection is upon you, first of all, that you have a place to shelter in during shelter in place, that you're healthy. You're watching this video right now in your home, and you're not watching it waiting for a doctor to look at your cough. You're not looking at it in an ICU waiting for a ventilator to open up. Your family isn't watching this video while they put you on life support over the coronavirus. God's hand of protection has already been upon you and that you're sitting there right now healthy and watching this. And if God forbid you're one of the unhealthy ones, God's hand is still upon you and healing is still available for you. But during this time, you need to be, God is with you. And the fact that you're cooped up in your home right now is not a lack of faith. You're still believing in God's continued protection over your life. And if you're one of the people who isn't sheltering in place because you're a doctor, you're a nurse, you work at a grocery store, you work at a gas station, you work in these jobs where you are in direct ex possible direct exposure to people with coronavirus, and you have no option of getting away from it, you can absolutely claim, God, claim God's protection for your life. And God is your protector, God is your healer, God is your portion, God is your everything. And if, God forbid, you were to be struck down with the coronavirus, your faith tells you that you have the hope of a world beyond this one, that your death is not the end for you. And that is an ultimate exercise of your faith. So the Bible tells us to obey our earthly authorities in Romans chapter 13, except when they tell us to sin. And our county leaders have been faced with choices they never thought they were going to have to face. When they ran for the jobs and the posts that they have now, they didn't run for them thinking there was going to come a day they have to shut down the county for two weeks. They are acting in accordance with the best information they have and the best wisdom and judgment that they have. You need to pray for them for continued wisdom and judgment. You need to pray for those doctors and those nurses and the healthcare professionals and the people at the grocery store being exposed to hundreds of people a day. You need to pray for all those people and you need to shelter in place. You need to thank God for his protection. And you need to know there is going to come a day when we're going to be back here at TPC saying, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I was glad when the county judge said we could have church again. But until then, we're going to have church in our homes and the presence of God is going to be there. God bless you and we can't wait to see you again.